Hey Chris, long time no see. I'm, hey, pretty, Nick, how I'm you doing? pretty sure you've been in some of our very early videos from Sonic State Towers. Yeah, I reckon so. I think so. A few too. years ago. A few years ago. Well, lovely to see you. Um, you're doing more sort of the pro audio and audio side, and this is. What is this? It looks delightful. So, yeah, this is the DM3. It's our new compact digital mixer, 16 channel or 16 input mixer. Um, so, you've got 16 XLR inputs on the back, four of them of which are combi inputs. Um, I don't know if I can turn that around a little bit for you, if that's helpful. Uh, we've got also that. got eight physical outputs on the back as well, also on XLR outputs. Um, USB connection, which I'll talk a bit more about in a minute. Uh, this one's got an uh, Ethernet port as well. And there is another model called the DM3. Uh, this is the DM3 standard, and the DM3 features a Dante board as well, so you can hook up to your Dante network. And does that increase the number of processing channels? It doesn't as well? increase the number of processing channels. It's still a 16 input mixer. Uh, the difference is that you can draw your inputs and send audio to anywhere on the network. Um, so what's so great about this? Well, it features some brand new microphone preamps, which have kind of been inspired by our CL and QL range. So the quality of these is really fantastic. Uh, it's running at 96 kilohertz. So again, the, the resolution is really pristine. Um, we've, we've tried to create a product that caters for everybody. So DM3 traditionally stands for digital mixer. We've taken that step further and we use it as do more. So DM3... Oh. Really I'd is. I'd love to have been at that meeting. Yeah, it was really <laughs> exciting. Um, so, equally in the studio, it's very comfortable, but you can take it out and do live, live gigs yeah. with it. You can take it to do corporate gigs as well. So, it's obviously got quite a nice small Great footprint. Great AV footprint, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Um, and for the more uh, kind of popular podcasting and streaming applications as well. Um, so, I mean, I've been, I've been there since the 01. O one, yes, w or the O three D. I yeah. mean, I've, I've I've had them all. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll be very familiar with the way Yamaha digital mixers work. So we have our selected channel, um, at which point all the controls on the screen relate to that specific channel. The difference between this and some of these more traditional mixers you mentioned is that we're now using touchscreen technology. Right, I was going to say, there's not much in the way of knobbage on there. No, so. and this is one of the ways we managed to achieve such a powerful professional mixer at a very good price point. Um, so we have the screen and the combination of the touch and turn knob. So effectively I can control, uh, select any of these parameters and now the touch and turn knob will control that. Um, or I can move it with my finger on the screen. Now you're probably thinking this EQ is a bit small. So we have the ability to be able to blow up the screen, not literally blow right, it up, but expand the screen and get and a get bit more tactile dynamics control. And all that other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah. So if we use the home key, which is another one of my favorite buttons on this desk, it takes us back to this familiar screen. Now I can see and access my dynamics. Um, as with a lot of Yamaha mixers, uh, each channel has four band parametric EQ, two dynamic processors, and a whole ton of other things. Um, the other nice thing about the DM3 is it also doubles up as an audio interface. So this actually gives you 18 in, 18 out over USB. Um, that's just 16 in input channels plus your stereo input and then 16 output over USB and you can, and can, you, and you can flip, can you do the sort of virtual sound check kind of business? With yes, all that? So you just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you can have a mixture of USB inputs and analog inputs or all USB or all analog. And if you've got the Dante model, you can mix and match that with Dante as well. I guess, I mean, because the thing that's interesting about this is, I mean, you know, lots of people, let's use the B word, you know, use maybe the uh, X32 rack. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is tiny though, isn't yeah. it? This, is, this could sit there and just kind of do your on-stage sub mix, your monitor mix. Your yeah, absolutely. Whatever, all kinds of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, I think that's been the most appealing thing about this. We've, we've met a lot of customers at the recent shows that have been happening who have seen the product launched online, but it's only when they actually see it in the flesh that they realise how compact and cute it is. I mean, if we can use that word cute for a, an audio product, but it really does look great. Um, it's reassuringly well-built. Not heavy, no, well built. 6.5 kilograms, so it is and, uh, very portable. Top top panel USB, is that for two-track? Yeah, track? this is for two-track recording and playback, also for your data um, 
loading and saving. And is there any sort of cross compatibility with channel setups for some of the higher up? Uh, so, you know, like EQ libraries, Dynamics libraries from some of the higher up mixes? Not that I'm aware of as a direct um, transformation, but what we do have, we've, we've incorporated our Quick Pro presets. So the Quick Pro presets are libraries that we've worked with other manufacturers. So if, for example, you've got a Shure SM57 microphone and you want a very quick EQ curve for that, you can go into the library, select drums, filter down, find that microphone and load an EQ curve that Yamaha have worked in con collaboration with Shaw to produce. And are these all motorized faders, by the way? Yeah, really nice motorized faders, actually. So we've got layers, usual layers. Yeah, so you've got input layer 1 to 8, 9 to 16. Then you've got your effects and monitor section. You've got your output section. So you've got six monitor mixes and a matrix mix. Um, the eight outputs on the back are assignable. So if you were using all six of the mixes plus your stereo output, that would be your eight taken up. If you wanted to use a matrix output, you would... Uh, sacrifice one of your pairs of monitors. Are there any option boards? Because I mean, I know some mixers have little option boards where you might put a, uh, I know, a, a, I suppose not Firewire anymore, ADAT, or you know, you said you've got Dante. Yeah, so we don't do an option with a DM3. You you go DM3 standard, which is what we've got here today, or you've got DM3, which has the Dante board pre-installed. So you can't upgrade the DM3 standard to the pre to the Dante version. But you've got an RJ45 network port on there. Yes. Does that do AVB or any of those uh, network standards? It's just for network of uh, a local network, so you can actually use the apps. Um, and so that, but that means, I mean, this is the other thing that a lot of people want IP control because you can stick that behind a firewall router and somebody can mix it from, you know, in Sydney and the the, the mixers in uh, Brisbane, for instance, and they're just, you know. Do you know what I mean? You can you yeah, got remote yeah. control of it if you can do it over IP. If yeah. It works IP address, I guess that might. Work. I don't know. That'd be honest. interesting. Okay. Um, cool. I mean, I guess the only question is, how much is it then? So these are uh, re retailing. The street price is about fifteen hundred pounds for the standard model, and then the Dante version is coming in about two thousand. Okay, so Dante, that'll give you. Does it give you access to all, uh, what is it on Dante? Is it 56 channels? I can't remember what the, it's loads, isn't it? It's hundreds. Hundreds. So yeah. you just patch them in the yeah, patch yeah. bay. Yeah. Is that, can you do that from front panel or do you need to do that from a software? Uh, no, you can do it within here. So yeah, you can go, you can go into the, the settings and, and play around with the patching to assign your channels. The actual management of the Dante would be done by the con Dante controller software on your laptop. Right. Thanks, Chris. You're very welcome. Great to see you again, Nick. Thank you.